Hey guys, I'm here at Radiant Images, the most innovative VR rental house in sunny Los Angeles. And today we are gonna do an in-depth review of the Zcam K1 Pro. Feel me right now. This is the first ever camera certified by Google on their VR 180 program. And it's a really great professional level 180 camera. To make this video interesting, I gotta compare the image quality between this camera and my two GH5 two HAL 200s VR 180 side by side rig in image quality and stereoscopic quality. And to make it even more interesting, as you see right here, I gotta compare that with the Obsidian S and also the very expensive Zcam V1 Pro. Cut them in half in VR 180 so you can really understand how the side-by-side -side rate work compared to 260 and then how good is the image quality of the Zcam K1 Pro. Again, this is a VR 180 video to fully enjoy this experience and see the true quality of this camera. You should probably watch this in one of these VR headsets. If you don't have a VR headset, you can also watch this in the very cheap Google Cardboard. And here's the instruction on how to watch that. What's up everybody, it's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up. Before we dive right in and talk about a Zcam tech spec, let's do a camera comparison first. As you see the screen right here is captured direct feed from the, my red camera right here to the back screen right here. So you see that there's a four camera in the setup, the setup and the bottom is the Zcam K1 Pro and the middle is a 2GH5 and the 2 Antonia HAL 200 lens. And then on the top, uh, we have the Obsidian S and then on the right, we have this professional, very expensive Zcan V1 Pro. They all shooting at the same time. So look at the screen right there. So as you all know that for stereo rig is right now I am three feet, about three meters away from the camera. So put on your VR headset, look around. The first one is the Zcan K1 Pro. So I'm just a step away really really far away about like five meters away from the camera back to the wall uh, you can check out my focal chart behind me to really see how sharp is this camera and then i'm gonna go back uh, as you all know for vr stereo rig there's always a safe distance between the subject and the camera so why not i'm walking toward the camera getting really really uncomfortable uncomfortably close to the k1 pro so now i'm actually arm length uh, my distance between me and the camera. That usually is not a safe distance for any stereo rig. But I gotta break that. I gotta go even closer to the K1 Pro and touching the camera. And then I gotta touch the GH5. And then I gotta touch the Obsidian. And then I gotta touch the V1 Pro. So now uh, you see how close the camera compare and the stereo gobbit effect of all four of this camera. So next, this is the two Panasonic Lumix GH5 with the Antonia How 200 fisheye lens. First, let's look at the image quality. Why is image quality so important? Because if majority of your audience are going to watch your content on a desktop browsers or on a mobile phone without VR headsets, stereo 2D quality does not matter to them at all. They don't even see your whole frame, just cropped it in the center. And that is why I would not even suggest it. You should lower than 6K for VR 180, like using the E Horizon or the Lenovo Mirage camera, and they shot up to only 4K. It's going to look blurry and low quality compared to the regular 1080p video. And that is the impression your audience will get if they don't know this is the VR 180 video. And most of them really don't. So your goal is to maximize image quality as much as possible to make your cropped 180 VR video look as good as regular 1080p video shot on a common DSLR. And that is the whole reason why I use the 2XGH5 rig because I shot all my regular video vlog video in GH5. So the same quality will be transferred to my VR 180 video. So I don't punish my viewer who don't own a VR headset. This is a comparison video. I try not to make too much personal comment on the image quality. 
you should scroll back to look at the K1 Pro footage and compare it with the GH5 footage. And let me know in comment section which one you like the best. They are in the same resolution, both in 6K, and both of them are Michael Forster sensors. Obviously, the GH5 is a more expensive setup with a professional fisheye lens, the Antonia How 200s, the same brand used on the red dragon you see on my left or on your right. You can tell the GH5 has a slightly better dynamic range and a better highlight roll off. And the skin color on the GH5 is better than the Zcam. And in general, I just like the GH5 look. But again, it is because I am a Panasonic shooter and you might disagree with me, which is okay. Now let's move on to stereo quality. And again, you should watch this on a VR headset. The GH5 is a 100% manual stereo calibration with Mystica VR. I think it looked good in this scene because I spent it hours to make this look good. In the next video part two, when I show you the post workflow comparison, you will really appreciate what Zcam did for you to make your life easier. Stereo calibration should be a computer AI job, and that is what Zcam came on strong point is. When I come close to the camera, you can see the stereo bay is larger in GH5 than the K1 Pro. It is because the I.O. distance is larger in the GH5. It is around 75 mm, and the Zcam K1 Pro, I believe, is 65 mm. So you can go closer to the Zcam than the GH5, according to the Stereo 130 rule, which is another very important decision you need to make when you're choosing a VR 180 camera. And another thing we know about uh, for VR 180 rig, side-by-side rig with the professional V1 Pro or the Obsidian is the side. So now I go on to the left side, next to this moving rig right here. As you see, you, we should see vertical parallax between the K1 Pro and the GH5 and then and then compare that with the V1 Pro and the Obsidian and you see the vertical parallel distance and, and how good is stereo in the side of the camera. And just a rule of thumb, you always want to put your subject in the center frame, not on the side because you see really funky stereo parallel effect if you walk to the side like right now, I'm at. So here is the GH5 in the same scenario going to the side, the left side and the right side. And you can also check out the vertical parallax, especially on top and bottom when I'm on the side. The GH5 have a less vertical parallax and actually almost unnoticeable because I did a lot of calibration in Mystica VR to try to get rid of vertical parallax even on the side. You will see a little bit more vertical parallax in the Zcam version, but still there is a common issue of any side-by-side -side rig like the K1 Pro or the GH5. On the side, there will be a vertical parallax especially on the top and bottom on the side. And that's one disadvantage compared to side-by-side -side rig than a full on 360 VR rig. Next is VR180 created by Kendall Obsidian S camera in 6K 30 frames per second. One advantage of Kendall Obsidian S that cannot be shown in this video is that it can actually go up to 50 frames per second in 6K, so we can keep a higher frame rate than K1 Pro or GH5. You do need to realize that both Obsidian or the Zcam V1 Pro is fundamentally different camera design than K1 Pro or GH5 side by side. You can say K1 Pro is a stereo pair design with two 180 fish islands paired together to create stereo, and there is no stitching involved. But both Kandao Obsidian or the Zcam V1 Pro, which using radio design, require extra stitching. So this is one of the disadvantage of using a full-on VR360 camera as a VR180 camera. Besides pricing, in general, the VR360 camera are more expensive. The Obsidian S costs around six thousand US dollars, and the Zcam V1 Pro costs around forty thousand US dollars. But as you see, the Obsidian also has pretty good image quality and stereo quality. And the stitching is actually very easy and AI-based. 
if you follow my Mystica VR and Obsidian tutorial and you own the Obsidian camera, there is no need to invest an extra VR 180 camera. You can actually really easy to use your current VR 360 camera as a VR 180 camera. And I will teach you how in part three of this series when we come to VR 180 post-production. By the way, if you own the Insta360 Pro, which can also shoot 6K stereo, you can achieve the same result. But the image quality will be not as good as any of the camera listed above. One special advantage of Obsidian S or R as a stereo camera in general is you can go even closer to the camera than the GH5 or the K1 Pro because of the camera design. But you do need to use the Mystica VR edge point feature to really leverage this advantage. Another advantage to use Radio Design VR 360 camera is the vertical parallax is very evenly spread out, even on an extreme left and right side, as you see right here. So your subjects, actors or actresses are safe to go left and right without causing vertical parallax issues. To make this fun, the next footage you are watching right now is shot with the Zcam V1 Pro, a $40,000 high-end 360 VR camera in the exact same scenes. As you see, the V1 Pro also has really nice color and image quality right out of the box from Wonder Stitch, the Zcam native stitching solution. One noticeable thing about the V1 Pro is its extremely sharp and clear images without even any post sharpening or HDR done to it. V1 Pro has nine different high quality fish islands and also utilize Michael Forcer big sensor for capturing. In theory, four and a half lenses are used to create this VR 180 video. Compare it to the Zcam K1 Pro, which only use two lenses to create the stereo effects. If you do the math, the V1 Pro should have more information captured it so we'll generally have better image quality and stereo quality. The advantage is really shown with subjects are on the left or right sides of the camera. As the vertical parallax is evenly spread out in this entire scenes, again, there is stitching and post-production involved, even Zcam Wonder Stitch make it extremely simple. As you can see, the scenes start to break down when I'm close to the camera and crossing the stitch line. You will need Mystica VR to do a fine stitch to fix it. So if you are looking for an easier solution, the Zcam K1 Pro is still a winner here. This concludes the first part of the K1 Pro review and comparison video. The next part will be even more interesting as we will test the low light performance of Zcam K1 Pro compared it to the two GH5 side-by-side -side rig and the Obsidian S camera. I call this test the extreme low-light candle test as we will only light the room with candles. In part 3, we will go into detailed tech review, stitching and stereo calibration and post workflow of the Zcam K1 Pro. If you want to learn more, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching guy and with me here is Omar from Radiant Images. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching Hugh's video. If you guys have any more questions about VR cameras, 2D or 3D, please feel free to contact us. We do a lot of rentals. We can help you out with any of your projects, low budget or high budget. We have the solutions for you. Great guy, I'll see you guys next time.